Hello everyone, it's Davide here and welcome back to Learning Finance. In today's video guys, I'm gonna give you three stocks that in my personal opinion, if the price is gonna go lower during the short term, I would love to buy them because they have a potential of a 2x or 3x over the long run, so over the next five to seven years. So if you are interested, I just ask you one thing, just leave me a like, you are helping me a lot with the channel. And why not subscribe to the channel? And let's begin. Okay, so this is the S&P 500. It looks like we are just stopping to go straight up as crazy. And it looks like the market is thinking a little bit about what to do next. I made a video about the four main possible scenarios. If you haven't already, go to check it out. It's interesting, I think, to have a view of what could happen in the long run. So if the market is going to go down again, those are the stocks that I would definitely buy. The first one, guys, Uber Technologies, ticker symbol Uber. So this stock here. Probably everyone knows Uber. I think that all of you have used Uber at least once in your lifetime, okay? It's, I don't know you, but I find it very, very, very useful. And when you find something useful, basically you have to be careful because when something is useful, when people like something, you are half of the race, okay? It's very likely that the business itself is gonna continue to grow okay because if people like something well guess what they're gonna use it and more and more and more now right now as you can imagine with this uh, situation all around the world this business has been hit uh, drastically okay no, no doubt about that but you know what they are not giving up because uh, as I showed you in a video the last week they have uh, created two new businesses. One is Uber Direct and the other one is Uber Connect. With Uber Direct especially, I love it. I love it. This is basically, uh, we already have Uber Eats, okay? And they, we, they, they deliver food. Now, with, that, with this thing right here, the idea is to deliver not just food, but a lot of other items, okay? So it's like you need to buy something, you go online with the app, uh, you go to the retailer and you buy what you want and they deliver this thing to you. So if you put it in perspective, here we can have a business that is going to take market shares in the delivery industry. So imagine that one day between five years, six years, seven years, Uber become the first business to deliver items at home. That would be huge in terms of earnings, okay? And I think that's a first step, guys. That's a first step. Imagine you buy something online and instead of a uh, hundred different small businesses that deliver all around the world, depending on where you live, you have just one Uber, okay? With people that they go there, there is the app, and they bring you things to home. And the other business here, Uber Connect, basically, if you have to uh, bring something like a parcel of a package, um, to one of your friends or family or whoever it is, you just don't go there. Probably uh, you cannot go there now in lockdown or in the next year when we are not in a lockdown anymore, hopefully. Probably you cannot because you don't have time or you have to go to work or you have to do other stuff. So what you do, you have Uber Connect. You just take your phone, you book a delivery on the app and a man come to your house you give him the parcel and he's gonna deliver the parcel to whoever you want inside the same day. Okay, and that is wonderful. No doubt about that. So as you can see, I like it because it's a business that 
they are not giving up. They always come up with new ideas and I really love it. I really love it. Now, I already own some Uber shares, but I'm planning to buy more if we are going down a little bit, okay? If we come back below 20 and below around $18, $17, I would love to buy more shares of Uber because I think, and I'm pretty sure about that, that over the long run, in the next five, seven years, Uber, that at the moment, is not profitable. Remember that, it's not profitable. But they are working on it, and they will, of course, find a way to make it profitable. And once this happens, considering uh, the fact that they are always working on new businesses, and it's so useful to, to just use those apps, I'm pretty sure that we are going to have a, a, a price at least around 70 bucks per share, at least. Because right now, the market cap is 47 billion, is below 50 billion. If we come back to those prices, we are going to have a market price of around 30 billion, okay? And I can see... Clearly, the Uber stocks in the next five to six years, in my personal opinion, of at least around 150 billion of market cap. Okay, so that's a stock that I love it and I will definitely buy more if the price is gonna go down in the short term a little bit. Okay, now let's go to the next one. So the next one, guys, is JP Morgan and Chase, ticker symbol J. PM. Okay, now this is a, a financial stock and I don't like generally financial because you don't always know what's going on in the business. Okay, it's not easy to understand what's going on. But this one, guys, this one is the king. Okay, it is no doubt. It's like top three banks in the world. In US, of course, we have Bank of America. JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo. Those are the three best stocks in financials that you can have. And I, I really like this one. Right now we are around 92 bucks per share, but I think, you know what, if the market goes down a little bit more, if we just come back to the previous lows below $80, I would love to buy JP Morgan and Chase over the long run, okay? Because I think, honestly, that this stock can be in five to six to seven years, this stock can be almost to $200 per share, okay? Right now, the market cap is 280 billion. If we come back to those levels here, we are gonna have a market cap of around 220, 210 billions. And I personally see this bank in the next five, seven years of half a trillion dollars of market cap. Why I say that? Well, the banking system is not the problem in this particular show. I mean, the government is, we decided as a, as a people to shut down part of the, part of the economy in a big way. Well, remember, this is not like 2008, okay? This is not a financial crisis. This is another stuff. And banks, when basically, when US is putting more money, guess what banks are gonna do? They have more business to do, okay? You are increasing the business of banks when you put more money into the system. They are gonna have more loans to do. You are increasing the oil inside the, their engines, okay? It's like you are putting more fuel to their businesses. And if you are a top bank in the world, well, guess what? The share price is gonna go up in the long run. There is no doubt about that, okay? Well, JP Morgan has basically been hit by the financial crisis in 2008, as everyone knows, but they went up in a huge way, guys, in a huge way, because 
investing in 2008, JP Morgan was like 50, $16 per share, okay? And right now, you, you are basically more than 5x that price, con considering the drop, okay? So that's it. I love this business. I love this bank. And the CEO, Jamie Dimon, he said basically that this pandemic can include a bad recession. But you know what he said later on? That we have the resources to emerge from the crisis as a stronger country. Now here he was talking about US in general, but if you read between the lines, we have the resources. In my opinion, he was also talking about the banks itself. Okay, we have the resources. That's an important message. Don't forget, this, uh, the CEO was already in the bank during the Great Recession financial crisis of 2008. And it has been a good figure to start to ramp up again the business. And so he's a very strong personality in the business. Okay. After the crisis, JP Morgan has a stellar decade delivering the largest gain in the stock price out of any of the big four US banks. And he has the most trusted leader in banking. So I really love it. The third one on the list, guys, is MGM Resorts International, ticker symbol MGM. This is casino industry, okay? MGM. I think that whenever you, you just see a movie uh, that it's based in Las Vegas, you just always see these three letters right here in the in Las Vegas environment, okay? And this is probably one of the most famous uh, casino company in, in, in Las Vegas. They have always been in the game, okay, since old times, old times. And I know that basically their main issue right now is that their business is mostly based in Las Vegas. Okay, now I know that there are a lot of like different casinos companies like, for example, Win Resorts that they invest a lot in Asia. But this company here, they are old school, okay? They are based in Las Vegas and their main business is in Las Vegas. So right now it's more of a problem because guess what? Asia is already going on and while US right now is still very blocked with this crisis, with this lockdown situation, okay? But, well, we all know it's not gonna last forever. I cannot imagine the US country just in lockdown forever. That, that's in my opinion, that's impossible, okay? And do not forget that we had already had a problem with a pandemic in 1920, okay? With the, the Spanish disease. And guess what? Well, we got away with that. We got away with that in 1920, guys. We got away with that. And right now is 2020. And guess what? We are going to get away with that too. In the next five years, no one is going to remember that. Oh, okay, it's going to be just, you know, a bad memory. But, you know, something that is not going to happen now because it has already happened. And that, that's what it is, guys. That's a black swan event. But you cannot stay at home forever. And Las Vegas is going to come back to be one of the most entertaining cities around the world. Why I love MGM Resorts? Well, in my opinion right now in the casino business, this is the most undervalued stocks of them all in the industry of casino, okay? So that's why I, I really like it. And they are very, very active and propositive. That's what I mean by that. Right now, this is from Sunday, and they say they are fighting, they are trying to be uh, active in the reopening phase of Las Vegas. 
So they are saying now there is a problem for NBA, you know, the, as always all around the world. I live in Europe, and for fo for football is the same. NBA they 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 stopped the season, and MGM Resorts is very active in that way. They are trying to push things back to normal. They are trying to be there in the first place as soon as things they are gonna come back to normal. And they, they are pushing on NBA on finishing the season in uh, Las Vegas. MGM Resorts International could play a key role in reopening of Las Vegas Strip properties. Reports that MGM Resorts International has offered the NBA the chance to finish its season in uh, Las Vegas. MGM's plan reportedly calls from Mandalay Bay to serve as the hub for the league. Since it's connected to other hotels and convention and a convention center, according to the proposal, as many as 24 basketball courts could be built at the convention center. Players' families will uh, reportedly be able to stay with them in the quarantine resort. We have been in ongoing dialogue with leagues and other sporting activities around televised only events, said R. Buckle. Boxing, MMA, NBA, NHL, etc. And we can host some of that, and we are working diligently with those to do that. So they are, they are very active in trying to take, again, part in the business as soon as things are going back are starting to going back to normal they have around uh 2.3 billions in cash so they are gonna make it through this crisis and a couple of days ago they also issued a uh, 750 million in debt that and the market took this debt so basically they have even more cash right now to make it through they are also investing in the online gaming industry and they are planning to expand the business in Asia as well, especially in Japan. So I am really positive with this company. And let's take a look at the share price. The lower price that we have was at $6.50. Now we are around 15, but you know what? If is gonna go down below 10 I would be super interested in this stock because I think honestly that you know what over the next five six years when this when we get away from this thing this share price of this company can at least go back to where it was okay and if you buy this company around 10 bucks it means that just if it goes back where it was to 34 around the 30s you're gonna make a 3x on your investment and you know what I will be pleased to do that and that's why I love this stock and I'm planning to buy it as soon as the market goes down a little bit if we go back below 10 around 10 I would love to jump in okay that's it so this is the end of the video guys i hope you like it and uh, leave me a comment below tell me if you like those stocks or if you have older stocks that you like it and you are planning to buy leave a like which is very important for me and subscribe to the channel have a wonderful day guys see you soon bye